one of the most, com well, the whole book is compelling animal liberation, in my opinion, but, but um, the, one of the, what I particularly like about it is it's based on data mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and not just talk. And, uh, and one of the things that's so damning is your discussion in great detail of, of how we treat animals for food uh, and also how we treat animals for testing. But I think that it's, we don't have time to go on both. But I, I, I just thought maybe because the, the real facts of how, of, of, of the pastoral idea of animals being farmed and, and, and used is, is not really true in factory farming. So maybe you could give one or two examples because I think it's important to get them Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And, and I think the farming area is the one to choose, both because it's vastly larger, something like 9 billion animals uh, raised and killed for food each year in the United States. Plus, it's the one that you know, you can all do something about quite directly in terms of not supporting it with your consumer spending. Um, so let's, let's just, uh, you know, take some examples. One of the, the largest number of these animals are chickens. And people think, you know, chickens are stupid and so on. But in fact, chickens are also social beings and they can show that they are quite aware of various things and they can suffer in various ways. And, and a lot of people say to me, oh, I, you know, when I talk about being a vegetarian or a vegan, they say, I don't eat red meat. Well, I think in terms of animal suffering, eating chicken is the worst thing to do because 99.9% .9 of the chickens produced in the United States are factory farmed. They, that is, they have the, lead their lives inside vast sheds that might hold 20,000 birds. They're crowded together so that if you look at one of these sheds when they're getting ready to be killed, it's just like a carpet of white feathers. Um, they are bred to grow extremely fast. They're killed at six weeks, 42 days of age. They're basically babies, but they're very large babies. And they're, they're bred to grow so fast that quite often their legs will collapse under them. Their immature leg bones can't hold the weight. Now, there's no individual attention for these birds. You've got 20,000 birds in a shed. Nobody is gonna notice that this bird can't walk. That it's, that it's just sitting on the litter. So what will happen to it? it can't get up and walk over to where the water is or where the food is. So it's gonna starve to death or die of thirst. And that, you know, because there's such a vast industry, billions of birds, we're talking about hundreds of millions of chickens in the United States that die of thirst or hunger each year. Um, and, you know, even if they don't, there's, there's the crowding, the air is full of ammonia. If you walk into one of these sheds, you know, it really gets in your eyes immediately. And then they're just rounded up in the you know, quickest possible way because they're so cheap and they're trucked. You might have seen the trucks, how they're crammed. Uh, they're trucked to slaughter. Um, they're not all pre-stunned because again, there's so much pressure on doing it so fast um, that uh, some of them will miss the stunner and uh, be, have their throats cut while they're fully conscious. Uh, so it's, it's really a, a disgusting business, I think. And, uh, you know, anybody with any concern for uh, animal suffering ought not to be supporting it. I mean, that's, I, yeah. It's... You know, I don't really think that was disgusting enough, so let's go a little more. Because um, we talked about an example this afternoon that was really um, um, a real, about a related bird, since it's coming up for Thanksgiving, which you're all going to enjoy. Um, let's, talk, let's talk turkey. Yeah. So, so turkeys are also uh, factory farmed in, in large sheds in pretty similar sorts of conditions. But there's one particular peculiarity that a lot of Americans don't know about when they're thinking about their Thanksgiving turkey. And that is that the standard factory farm turkey, which again is 99% of all the turkeys sold in America, has been bred to have a breast so large that it cannot mate. The male actually just physically cannot get it into the female. So how is it that there are more turkeys of these breeds? Because there are unfortunate workers whose sole job it is all day is to masturbate male turkeys and collect the semen, and other workers whose job it is to grab the female turkeys and inject the semen into them. Um, I have a friend and colleague, Jim Mason, with whom I wrote a book called The Ethics of What We Eat. And so that he could really speak about this experience firsthand, he applied for a job as a turkey inseminator. Uh, he lasted one day in that job. He said it was the worst, filthiest, hardest day's work he ever did. And 
he was at the bottom of the pecking order. Everybody was taking it out on him for not working fast enough, which meant he had to grab the turkeys faster, be rough to them. These turkeys, especially the females, know what's going to happen and they don't like it, so they're struggling. He's grabbing them, trying to inseminate them, and if he doesn't do it fast enough, he gets kicked and abused by the people above him. So, of course, you know, not Jim, but most of the workers at the bottom of that pecking order will take it out on the birds as well. Um, so, you know, think about that before you order your Thanksgiving turkey. Again, do you really want to participate in this practice, which is created just so that Americans can eat more turkey breast meat? Yeah, I mean, you're very strong. I mean, you, 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 the point is you say this is undeniably immoral. And yeah, the moral because, obligation... Because, you know, we're... we're, we're going against the greatest interest of these animals in not suffering and having a reasonable life, just so that we can have a, a somewhat cheaper product. I, and, you know, I think you say, until we boycott meat and all of their products of animal factories, we are, each one of us, contributing to the continued existence, prosperity, and growth of factory farming and all other cruel practices uh, in rearing animals for food, and that's immoral. Um, therefore, you argue in favor of vegetarianism, clearly. Indeed. And, 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 uh,